Healing Rooms Ministries present the testimony of Jesus. My name is Lazarus, it feels good to be alive. When I in chains of death was bound, this man named Jesus. First Peter 2.24, he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, that we might die to sin and live unto righteousness. For by his stripes you were healed. Living testimony of his death abiding touch. My name is Lazarus. Join us as we witness this same Jesus as he transforms and restores lives today. Experience real passion for Jesus Christ. Welcome to Healy Rooms Ministries, where the testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. I'm Cal Pierce, Director of Healy Rooms Ministries, and I would like to welcome you once again to our program. And today I have as my co-host, uh, Lane Perkins, who is the uh, Associate Director of the International Association of Healy Rooms. Mm -hmm. So welcome, Elaine. Thank you. Good to have you on the program again. Nice to be here. And today we're, we're going to talk about some of the testimonies and things that are happening internationally with Gila Rooms mm -hmm. and uh, uh, in, in the nations, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, it's exciting to just see this work of healing going everywhere. It is. I mean, as of just yesterday, I found out that there are 630 Healy Rooms, mm -hmm. right? That's right. Because of some Healy Rooms that are being birthed in India. Yes. Uh, and we're, they're just, I don't know, how many they, how many they have in India now? It's well, like, at the moment, we have about 84, 84 in India. 84 Healy mm -hmm. Rooms. See, and it's had, growing weekly. Yeah, they had a goal for the year mm -hmm. in India for, uh, what, was it 100 or? Actually, it was 80. They've was already 80. surpassed their oh, okay. goal. Uh -huh. Wow. Yeah. You know, yeah, every time I get a number, and I, you know, I keep that number in my mind, and I, I come upstairs to the Inter International Association offices, and either Elaine or Debbie says, "No, there's a whole bunch more." Mm -hmm. You know, it's God is just healing His body and raising an army. That's right. In the nations, you That's know, and, right. and the testimony of Jesus is is prophesying out of the nations and. And that's exciting, you know. It's it, very. I think it won't be long. We'll have a thousand. No, probably not. <laughs> probably thousand. not. Besides, you keep prophesying, so I know we're going to get more anyway. Oh yeah, why but. not? <laughs> I mean, God's do, if, as long as God's up in front of you, how can you miss? That's right. You know, he just keeps doing it. That's right. Well, some of the things that um, I wanted to mention, the reason it's exploding is because uh, one of the national leader there, his name is Abraham and, and Sheila and Abraham Shaker. Uh -huh. And they, um, they're in Mumbai, India, and they have a vision to see healing rooms in every city, the north, the south, the east, and the west of every single city, every province, every village. They have a, a vision to see healing rooms everywhere because there are so many millions of people in yeah. India and uh, people are, are very, very sick. They're sick in their soul, they're sick in their spirit and they're yes. sick physically. Yeah. And they really feel that healing rooms is going to be the vehicle to see the people in India set free by a, a, a true move of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, because I understand that there's a real uh, attack against the structural church, but what we have heard is that a healing room isn't looked at that way. It's just uh, restoring people, and it's just the, it's a body of Christ just praying for people, and uh, it's not set in like the structural church because it doesn't have to be in a church building. Right, right, and we're not seen as a as so much of a threat because we're not in an in essence a, a, an evangelistic. Yeah. Uh, ministry that is trying to convert people. We're just, we're praying for them. And in the process, you know, many of them want to know who this Jesus is that healed them. But uh, that's yes. our goal is to see them healed and set free. And then they come to know yes. the love of Jesus. Well, because even someone who doesn't believe in Jesus Christ, who gets sick, you know, has a desire to be well. Mm -hmm. So they can go to these healing rooms and receive prayer right. and, uh, God gets the glory for it. That's you right. Know, it, it's, it's really interesting to see the dynamics of how this work is going because it's, it's activating an army mm -hmm. that wasn't meant to sit in church just for an hour once a week. 
right. but it's to do the work and that's what's happening in all these nations mm -hmm. and uh, you know just India alone we could have thousands of healing rooms just in that nation I don't know how oh, many absolutely. people are in the country but it's it's like you said it's millions it's of millions people. and there's 14 major languages in India so yeah. uh, as fast as they can right now I think they have eight uh, that they're working on as far as translating our training materials so that they can raise up these other healing rooms. But it, it costs money for them. It's very yeah. uh, hard on them even to travel, but they do throughout India. Um, and so our goal is to see all the major languages translated into our materials so that each village will have an opportunity to yeah. understand how to be trained up to pray for the sick. Well, and 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 in, in nations like India, we we fund a lot of that work ourselves. We the fees yes. that come in from the membership of the 600 plus healing rooms, mm -hmm. we use part of that to send materials to India, and we've even sent additional resources so that they could bring pastors together to train and equip them. And, yes, and uh, mm -hmm. you know if we have uh, viewers out there that have a burden for a country like India or Africa mm -hmm. or wherever and they and they can't go there but would like to sow into that we're mm -hmm. always willing to to receive those funds and earmark them Absolutely. on behalf of those nations and that's what I like about yeah. what God has given us the ability to do is we can set aside those funds and have 100% of those funds go into that nation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, and it is, it's very important because a lot of these in, in nations like Africa and in India, uh, the people that run the healing rooms, they need help with support, not just the starting of the healing room. Yeah. And so there is a lot of finances in, involved, but uh, we can accept donations through our website at www.healingrooms.com. Uh -huh. People out there that have a burden for this can sow into the nations of the world just by Amen. helping yeah. us financially. Yeah, because that 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 drives the work of the Holy Spirit. You That's know, right. God works through those resources, and we just want to be a blessing to those nations. That's right. Well, we That's have right. some testimonies. We do. We do. Let me see. Let's talk about, well, in India, we've already talked about some, I don't have a lot of testimonies, but people are being constantly healed and set free. They were saying that 85% of the Indian population suffers from physical illness. 85%? 85%, yeah. And 95% of the Indian population obviously needs to be set free free in their, in their spirit and in their yeah. emotions. But um, they really see healing rooms as the answer to this. And there's just, there's so many reports coming in of, um, oh my goodness, healing rooms in remote villages where people are being set free from horrible diseases and uh -huh. uh, uh, sores in their bodies and, and just even demonic influences in their life, that kind of thing. There's just yeah. a lot. Um, that keep coming in. In Africa right now, we have um, several places where there are uh, people of AIDS that are being healed, people of um, all kinds of, of sickness and disease, malaria that's even yeah. been healed. But in, uh, in Africa, for instance, we have about 20 healing rooms at the moment. Um, that national office is in Cape Town. It's mm -hmm. Graham and Claudia Purser in Cape Town, South Africa. Yes. Um, they are our South African national directors, and then they are also the advisors for all the African nations. And uh, at this time, we're in places like um, the Republic of Congo, Kenya, Liberia, Malawi, Nambi uh, Nambia, it's hard for me to say, South Africa, Tanzania, Uganda, and Zambia. Mm -hmm. So they are truly spreading the vision there as well and going to the um, different yes. nations and have even set up uh, different training centers and, and headquarters in different places all over Africa. So you don't have to go to South Africa just like you don't have to go to Mumbai in India to receive your training. These yeah. different training centers are being set up all over those nations. So, would you like to hear some things from Africa? Oh, so, sure. Okay. Absolutely. There was a little three-year-old girl whose mother had died of cancer, and she was brought to the healing rooms, and she couldn't walk, she couldn't speak, and she often got sick. And they said after she has, had prayed, been prayed for, only one week later, she was talking, she was walking, and she was running. 
wow. and had awesome. stopped getting sick. They said they still have the report. As a matter of fact, uh, Moses, one of our representatives, uh, went to her to see her and she hadn't been sick in a long time. So um, she's been completely healed. Wow. Then they wow. talked about a 35-year-old woman who had shingles. That's very, very yes. painful. And it was on her right arm and she received prayer and all the pain left and is now completely able to use her arm and her hand. There's no, no sign of any shingles left. See, and it, what is so exciting is uh, you know, we, we have these testimonies coming in, and, uh, but they're, they're achieved by just people that have been equipped in Africa. It could be people that live in the bush. Oh, absolutely. You know, that are equipped mm -hmm. and they, they do the work of the Holy Spirit, lay hands on the sick, and, mm -hmm. and the sick recover. And we see, we're seeing powerful testimonies from people like this, people in India who who come to know Christ and and you know and we don't we don't tell them how long you have to be saved you just right. come into the kingdom and you can do the work of the kingdom right there and get equipped and lay hands on the sick and right. you know it's not it doesn't take a, a rocket scientist to pray for the sick it's just yeah. a, a hungry person who has a desire to serve Jesus can lay hands on the sick in a heater room and you know, work with the team and see the power of God uh, bring a manifestation of healing. Right, and know? that's what the Word says, but you yeah. know, that's why it's kind of a revelation in these nations too, is because they've been taught that really it's only the church leaders that can pray yeah. for someone. Yeah. But this model of a team ministry of ordinary women, men and women can be done in, like you said, remote yes. villages under trees or in, you know, little huts that they're using for healing yeah. rooms. Any, it's, any age, yep. you know, and, and that's really true what you said because in some cultures, you know, where, where, you know, men have an idea that well, women are subservient and and can't do the work of the ministry. That's not true. No. Jesus is no respecter of persons. That's it's, right. It's what he does through us anyway. You right. know, a vessel's a vessel, whether it's a man or a woman, old or young. Yeah. It's a vessel, yeah. and uh, that's exciting because it is. then. People rise up. They have a destiny. Women have a destiny just like men do. That's right. And it's a, just exciting to see these uh, these people beginning to do the work of the ministry. It is. We both complete this, the full image of God, yes. men and women. And the heart of God is that we all step into our destiny. Yeah. So. Jesus is a healer. He's That's still right. doing it today. He's just looking for people who will say, Lord, here I am. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to... Uh, to do the work, pray mm -hmm. for the sick, and mm -hmm. establish a healer room. And, that's uh, right. That's right. And if there's anyone that is interested in, or you know someone that's interested in another nation that might want to uh, establish a healing room, you can go to our website yes. and you can look, and we have different uh, leaders in each nation that you can contact about getting training. Absolutely. You know, it, it's the vision is every nation, every city, and every nation yes. where you have sick people. You have the body of Christ is available to pray for them. Uh, it's just an army uh, globally coming out of the pew into the street to do the work of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And that's what's going to take the final harvest. And right. that's the vision that we need to fan. So, mm -hmm. uh, so as Elaine said, if you're watching mm -hmm. the program and you need a healing, you can find a healing room. If you have mm -hmm. a desire, to uh, pray for the sick, you can do it because it's what God does in you. That's it's right. not what you have, it's what He has. He wants to pour through you. Mm -hmm. So we just wanna bless you today and thank you for watching the program and have a wonderful day. Spirit-filled Christians should perform the same type of ministry Jesus did while He was living on the earth. The scriptural authority of that conviction is Mark chapter 16, verses 17 and 18. And these signs shall follow those that believe. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Cal Pierce, the director of Healing Rooms Ministries, states that the ministry exists to restore the message of healing to the body of Christ. The vision is to see healing rooms set in around the world. We strongly encourage affiliation with the International Association of Healing Rooms to establish uniformity and accountability in each work. Part of that strategic objective is to train and equip believers worldwide to minister in the power gifts. 
To that end, we offer a training course that equips and empowers ordinary people to step into this exciting and extraordinary ministry. Are you a born-again believer with a desire to pray for the sick? Do you want to be a part of God's end-time ministry of healing? Would you like to walk in greater authority and anointing? If you answered yes to any of those questions, then perhaps you need to explore the possibility of becoming a part of Healing Rooms Ministries. We invite you to visit our website at www.healingrooms.com to learn more about what it takes to become equipped and empowered to minister the gift of healing to others. Welcome back to the program. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about a message that is really dear to my heart and it has to do with the kingdom of God. So much of the church in this hour knows the king, but they really don't have a, a solid foundational understanding of his kingdom. And when we look in the New Testament and we see what Jesus was talking about throughout the New Testament, he was talking about this kingdom. And we need to understand what the kingdom that Jesus was bringing was all about. And, and I believe it has to do with the, the uh, relationship with God. You know, that God doesn't want us to have a form of religion, but he wants us to have the power that comes through the kingdom of God. And in Genesis 1, 26 through 28, he says that we were created in his image and we were given dominion in the earth. And we're seeing the establishment of healing rooms taking the dominion that God has given us back into the body of Christ and then releasing that dominion into people's lives to set them free from what the enemy has done. Because we have been redeemed from the curse, therefore we don't have to live under the curse of the law we've been redeemed from. In John 8, 34, it says that the son remains in the house, uh, the slave does not. And you and I are sons and daughters of the king. And if, if, if we almost have to, a lot of us have to go back to Genesis and see what God's intention for mankind was that the fall had taken away, but yet we've been redeemed back into that proper position that we had lost. And, and we need to realize that we are sons and daughters of the king. We're to rule with the king, not to be a slave who serves the king, but a son and a daughter who reigns with the king. Because Jesus is called King Jesus. He's our king. He's our Lord. And, and we need to understand that. Ephesians 1.11 says, uh, We have obtained an inheritance. As sons and daughters, do we not have an inheritance from our heavenly Father? And the inheritance is all that he has in his will for us. God's word is his will, and he has given it to you and I. And therefore, we can receive everything that God has for us in his will. In Psalms 94, 9, it says, The Lord will not abandon his people, nor will he forsake his inheritance. God will not forsake the inheritance that he gives his children because it is set in the covenant in blood. And it's interesting that when we look at the scripture, God made a covenant with himself. He didn't make it with man. He made it with himself through Jesus. Because Jesus said, I'm coming to bring a new covenant. And that covenant was set in blood. And therefore, if God's made the covenant with himself, then it can never be broken. So, so he's able to tell us, I will not abandon my people, nor will I forsake the inheritance that I have for you. It will always be there. And we need to understand that. And this is what the kingdom is all about. It's about receiving what God's will is and fulfilling it on the earth. In Matthew 6, 10, Jesus told us, pray this way, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When we fulfill his will, we move in the kingdom authority that we have been given in Luke 10, 19. Because we have the inheritance of the land, God says, I own the heavens, but the earth I have given to man. He's given it to us to rule and reign in. And when we bring forth signs and wonders, miracles, healings, we are moving in the authority, bringing what God has into this realm. 
moving in the authority of Luke 10, 19. Because we have an inheritance, because God gave us the land and we're to remain in the house, he says, I give you authority over all the power of your enemy. And it's that authority that God wants his children to move in. And therefore we can, we can fulfill what is said in Matthew 18, 18 through 20, when Jesus said, whatsoever you bind on earth will be or will have been bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth will be or will have been loosed out of heaven. Because we have authority, we can bind and loose here and then it will be bound and loosed out of there because of the authority. And in 2 Corinthians 5.20, he tells us that we are ambassadors. We are ambassadors because we have this inheritance. In other words, an ambassador is someone who represents the kingdom they're sent from. And their provision isn't in the kingdom they're sent into. In other words, our provision isn't to be in the earth, it's to be from heaven because we're ambassadors from that realm. And as ambassadors, we have what I call diplomatic immunity. Every ambassador in, in the world has diplomatic immunity. Is that not true? In other words, they're not, they're not subject to the laws of the realm they're sent into. Diplomatic immunity allows them to only be subject to the laws of the realm they're sent from. So as sons and daughters of the king and his kingdom, we're, we just are submitted to the authority of the king's realm which is the realm of the king who is God. And, and we are ambassadors to bring what he has into this realm or to represent him into this realm. So our provision is not in the realm we're sent into. Our provision is not in the realm of the world. Our provision is in the realm of God. And that's why we can lay hands on the sick and see the power of God bring healing to them because we have authority, but it's God's power. And the power of God that's in us comes through the power of the Holy Spirit that dwells inside of this temple that we are. We are the temple of God. And as ambassadors, God puts his Holy Spirit in us so that signs and wonders and miracles, healings and things like this can take place in and through us as we lay hands on the sick and receive the inheritance that God has given us. So, you know, he tells us also in 1 Corinthians 4.20, the kingdom is not in word, but it's in power. It's, it's in power because you and I have an anointing from the Holy One, the Holy Spirit. And it's that anointing that's the power of God in us that destroys the work of the enemy and sets the captives free. If we're going to pray for the sick and have a manifestation of healing take place, then we have to move in the authority that God has given us lay hands on the sick, become the vessel for the power of God through the Holy Spirit to flow through us into them to bring forth that manifestation of healing. And it doesn't come through religion. It doesn't come through tradition. It comes through the power of God in us as the children of God, receiving our inheritance. You know, and what our inheritance is, is the word of God. You know, we, we will all have a future kingdom when Jesus comes for the bride, but we need to have his kingdom to come on earth now as it is in heaven. And that means we move in authority. You know, even though Adam lost his inheritance in the garden, Jesus reestablished that inheritance for you and I. He came to redeem us from the curse of that law so that we can repossess or take our proper place back before the fall of man and begin to do the work that God could be glorified in what Jesus has done on the cross. Okay, so the kingdom of God, it is within the believer. In Luke 17, 20 and 21, it says the kingdom is within you. The kingdom is within us because it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. We are the body of Christ. And what God is saying is his kingdom is in, inside of us. It's the, it's the power and realm of the Holy Spirit as he occupies you and I so that we can fulfill the will of God on the earth 
with his power, not ours. So he gives us authority, but he not only gives us authority, he backs it up with absolute power. And it's the power of, of the Holy Spirit inside of us that breaks every yoke. So in Romans 14, 17, it says, the kingdom of God is righteousness, joy and peace in the Holy Spirit. In other words, as the temple of the Holy Spirit, what the kingdom is, is a right standing, it says. You're in a right place when Jesus is the Lord of your life. You have joy because the joy of the Lord is your strength because you have strength in order to do all things through Christ who is your strength. And you have peace as your heart and mind is stayed upon Jesus. He gives you peace, the word says. And it says in the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is in you and I as a believer to empower us. So, so the, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace and joy and the Holy Spirit inside of a believer to put us in a proper position that overcomes a bad position, uh, condition and sets us free from the law of sin and death. And it's a dwelling place of victory where you and I become victorious as the bride of Christ. And then no weapon formed against us can prosper because we have this armor of light that the Holy Spirit puts on us as his body. You know, and when light is, is on you, the, the Bible says that, that, that no darkness can exist in the light. So as we, as we become the body of Christ and the Spirit of God is inside of us and we, we move in truth, then, then we won't be moved by what the enemy does to try to afflict us. We're only moved by what God does to set us free from that affliction. So we, we're in a right place, we're in a right position and a right position will overcome every wrong condition that we have because we won't be moved by what the devil does. We're only moved by what God does. And that's the point that I'm trying to make is that the kingdom of God, it says in Hebrews 12, 28, cannot be shaken. Religion, tradition, all the things that man devises can be shaken, but the kingdom of God cannot be shaken. So as you and I get that kingdom understanding and get it inside of us, we begin to realize that the kingdom of God in us is actually bigger than the world around us. It's all that heaven has made available to you and I as an ambassador of the king. And we're bringing his kingdom on earth just exactly like it is in heaven. And we're glorifying God and destroying the work of the enemy because it's Christ in you and I, the hope of glory. So, you know, if you don't know Jesus and you don't know the King and his kingdom, you can say right now, just lay your hands on yourself and say, Jesus, come into my life. I want to know you as the Lord of my life, as my savior, so that you can not only know the King, but realize he has a kingdom for you that cannot be shaken. It will change your life. So I want to thank you for watching the program today. God bless you. Bye-bye.